the title is uh, National Strategies uh, for Roma Inclusion, what data and for what purpose? And uh, as you have noticed, the title is slightly different from what it was announced at the beginning uh, when we uh, were preparing this session. Very simple reason. I thought that uh, it is not so important to have uh, a number of uh, slides with uh, graphs uh, in addition to what Michael already presented. You will have uh, access to the huge data set uh, once it's released. Now it is uh, with the different DGs, with DG Regio and uh, DG Justice. So I hope uh, in a few weeks or months we will have access to this. But for me, what is more important uh, is what is actually behind the bars and the graphs uh, how do we understand data? What does data mean? What does it not mean? And how we can use all these data infrastructures for monitoring purposes? Uh, as an introduction, uh, maybe you are wondering actually why a person from uh, UNDP, which is not uh, uh, EU agency, is uh, sitting in this room and <laughs> having something to say. Uh, basically for two reasons. Uh, United Nations Development Program he is uh, the so-called uh, uh, campaign manager and scorekeeper of the United Nations Millennium Development Goals campaign. And I'm referring to the MDGs because uh, uh, there is one very important initiative, which is the Decade of Roma Inclusion, which is in fact MDGs for Roma, with the same time frame, with the same priorities, and with explicit goals which need to be achieved. And uh, the second reason why mm, uh, I hope I have something to say is that uh, UNDP is involved in uh, Roma inclusion issues uh, basically since uh, uh, 2001. Uh, we are one of the three international organizations uh, which was founding member of the Decade of Roma Inclusion when it started in 2003, the preparation of this. And at that time, uh, UNDP was tasked uh, with the responsibility to deal with the uh, data and monitoring issues, and we are trying to do our best in that regard. And since then, we are uh, doing uh, uh, quite uh, a lot of things. Uh, and uh, one of uh, the issues which we were dealing was exactly addressing the data gaps. Uh, what is uh, the status of Roma? How to measure it and how to monitor? So after this introduction, mm, I would like to start with uh, uh, this uh, uh, general slide. Uh, I think it's good to start uh, uh, with a slight reflection before going into assessment or even assessment grid really to uh, spell out uh, what do we actually expect from a strategy? What is the ideal model of a strategy? In my view, a strategy should be strategic. Of course, it's a little bit tautological, but uh, in fact, it's not. Because uh, uh, when we look at the strategic uh, documents, very often one uh, issue which uh, comes out as a problem that it is a mixture of a plan and a strategy. So I think we should be clear about this. A strategy should have clearly several components. <coughs> First, outlining the target group. In this case, it is Roma. Second, it should have very clear time frame. Yes, we have it, uh, but uh, I think it is uh, largely due to the fact that we have uh, these European frameworks. Third, which is very important, is uh, having, oops, having clear underpinning philosophy into which uh, uh, the future actions, uh, programs, projects will be fitting in, so that at least they don't contradict each other. And of course, they should be set of priorities. Usually we have uh, everything as a priority, which cannot be. So prioritizing is a key important uh, issue. And allocating indicative resources. One issue which is uh, very often being omitted is uh, summarized in this uh, uh, bullet with the sub-bullets. So those are the four elements. Targets, indicators, quantitative baseline, and milestones. You have in your mm, uh, assessment grid of this paper uh, that there is also there's the, 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 the title this is, a is, is there a baseline and uh, uh, a baseline is a baseline really when it is quantified so having just a description of uh, what is the status in year uh, zero or year one is interesting but it's very difficult to use uh, in operationalized purposes uh, very briefly, what does it mean, targets? Uh, targets is a numerical value of the objective. Objective is a more general thing. It's, uh, for example, uh, we have an objective to have uh, Roma children uh, completing uh, with equal chances education. The target should be figure, 50%, 80%, 100% completing. The indicators is uh, how do we define the target? Is it enrollment rate? Is it uh, uh, attendance? Whatever it is, but it is a very clear definition. And of course, the baseline is the figure, again, starting uh, from which we uh, do the counting. 
We are happy to have a baseline for the Roma inclusion uh, based on our survey from 2004. Then we did uh, a baseline for the decade countries, at least for that. And uh, we will try to do some comparison uh, over time what has happened since. And one important issue is the milestones. Uh, it is not always included in the strategy, unfortunately, but uh, uh, it is very important to have. What are the intermediary steps which we need to have accomplished to tick the box? Yes, we have reached this stage so that we know we are on track. If we don't have the milestones, we may end up uh, uh, in one or two years before the end of the period, uh, the time frame which uh, we want to work on uh, having, okay, oh my God, we have not reached even the 90% of the, uh, what we have and no possibility to reach the overall objective. Uh, let me illustrate this with one example, what I've just said. This is uh, uh, a graph uh, on the enrollment rate based on the figures from the recent 2011 survey, which we did uh, uh, jointly with the World Bank and in cooperation with uh, Fundamental Rights Agency. Gross enrollment rate in compulsory education. This is a basic educational uh, indicator for uh, groups, uh, age group 715. Uh, I don't uh, name the country. It doesn't matter which country. This is it's a real country. But if you see uh, the figures in 2004, the first bar, uh, the gross enrollment rate for Roma was 76%. Uh, in 2011, it was 78 So, uh, assuming that by 2020 we want to reach somewhere, let's assume that uh, we want to reach at the level of 94%, which is, was the, uh, the same indicator for non-Roma living in close proximity in 2004. Uh, is it realistic if you look at the graph? Well, uh, I don't think. Uh, it's very much optimistic picture. Basically, there are two things here. Uh, one, if we want to reach the uh, initial target, which is 94%, then we have dramatically to increase the annual improvement in the outcome. Or if we want to keep the uh, improvement as it is now, roughly 2.5% uh, in the uh, period of uh, four years, then we should be realistic that by 2020 we will reach somewhere between 83 and 84 uh, percent. So those are the figures and uh, it is very important also in terms of policy prioritization. Do we want to be at the level of 94 percent in 2012, 20? If yes, then there should be a sequence of steps which needs to be accomplished. If not, then we won't be there. Very simple as that. Uh, the second important issue uh, and I think this is really, really worth uh, considering. We're talking about uh, assessing uh, the national strategies of Roma inclusion, but we usually tend to forget that the strategy is just a part of a broader package. So ideally, behind uh, a strategy, there should be at least two more things. One is national action plans or implementation plans, which will make the strategy a living organism and not just a paper uh, document. And second, there will be local action plans because things happen at local level. Uh, apologies for my maybe uh, cynical uh, pessimism, but uh, I try to be cautious. Uh, this is not the first set of strategies which we all have seen in our lives. I hope it will be the last cycle of strategy production because next I think we need tremendously those two elements, national action plans, local action plans. And behind the local collection plans, we need sector-specific and integrated projects and programs. So unless we have all this sequence, I'm not sure that uh, the, the strategies will be implemented successfully. Why do we uh, not focus on those elements? Because I'm afraid we are operating under the assumption of the kind of automaticism. Having a strategy, automatically we assume, okay, and now it's somehow we will uh, expect and it will be realized on its own. It doesn't happen like that in real life. Uh, coming back to the national action plans, in the previous slide I mentioned uh, the milestones. In fact, the milestones of the strategy should be clearly spelled out as the goals of the national action plans, the implementation plans, because then there will be a logical link between the strategy, the plans, and the practical implementation mechanisms uh, on, the, on the ground. And of course, uh, what is important uh, here, each of those elements strategies, plans, and local action plans have different level of aggregation of objectives and of data and of indicators and have different monitoring and evaluation modalities and have different data requirements. I am aware, understand that it makes the task a little bit more complicated than we hope, 
but let's be realistic. Unless we have this awareness, that it is much more complex than it looks like, it will be uh, difficult uh, to progress in the future. Now let me, uh, let me move uh, more closely with the data issues. So as I mentioned, uh, uh, these uh, three documents uh, require different types of data, different types of aggregation. Why? Because the strategy is strategic. The plan goes much more in terms of uh, outcomes by individual areas. And uh, the program uh, or project has much stronger focus on the output level. So let's also distinguish outcomes and outputs. And I will be talking about this uh, in, in the next slide. And uh, we, we tend to, tend to uh, somehow uh, make uh, absolutistic uh, conclusions about data sources. Having one data set, and we expect this to produce everything we, we want. No, one data set does not generate all the information possible because the different levels of a different kind, type of information and type of data can be generated from different uh, sources and we should be uh, on the one hand creative, on the other hand realistic about that. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe this is too simple what I will now present, but I, I have to say, say this because I witnessed in, uh, on other occasions that uh, there is a lot of confusion um, uh, between those three elements, information, data, and indicators. We tend uh, often to confuse information and data, and data and indicators. And, and those are very strictly distinct things. Information is a substantive message, basically. It's something which somebody hears or learns about the phenomenon. For example, a gossip is an information. Data is a quantifiable message. For example, if I say, oh, I heard a gossip about this, okay, this is information. But when I say, I heard uh, three gossips, it is already data. But neither information nor data mm, is not particularly helpful uh, beyond just curiosity if uh, we don't root it in the context. And rooting in the context is already indicator. Indicator is data combined with other data sources. So. If I say I heard three gossips, which uh, address uh, uh, two of them Roma issues, and uh, uh, two uh, and one gossip addresses uh, political issues, then it's uh, already an indicator. If I say I heard three gossips, and uh, uh, two of them by um, uh, told by men and one by women, it's another set of uh, uh, combination of uh, number of the gossips and type of uh, the source. So combination of the two data sets provides an indicator. An indicator is what actually what we need. So data does not mean indicator. And uh, uh, we use the data for constructing indicators and use indicators for monitoring and assessing the outcomes of the interventions. I think this is a very simple statement, but it's very important to bear in mind. When we talk about monitoring and evaluation, we talk about primarily of in, about indicators for which we need data to populate the indicators. So information just is not enough. When you have a baseline description of the status is interesting, but it's not enough. We always need to try to reach the level of data, quantifiable data, and based on this, to reach the level of indicators. Very briefly, uh, to make a little bit more complex, but uh, to, to structure the things, also, we should clearly distinguish types of indicators. This is also uh, notoriously, notoriously being uh, uh, somehow uh, confused. Uh, basically, we have four, four types of indicators, uh, which are usually summarized in two groups. Group of intermediate and final indicators. Indicators of the inputs, what we input into the process, it's number of person, days, uh, money invested, and so on. Outputs, what is produced out of the process, for example, the number of uh, uh, lectures delivered is an output. What would be the outcome of those lectures? Would be your knowledge uh, or your curiosity or only which would come out of the, of the output. And the impact would be when you use this knowledge somehow in your future life or future professional uh, activities. So as you see, those all are different things measured by different, populated by different types of data and mean, have different meaning. Uh, when I was uh, addressing and uh, analyzing with my colleagues the National Action Plans of Roma Inclusion uh, a few years ago, the notorious mistake which is being committed is confusing inputs and outputs, and even worse, inputs and outcomes. People report that uh, and we will achieve inclusion of Roma in this and this area, and the indicator of the achievement will be the number of training 
for, for example, like this, which is, I mean, <laughs> it is not correct. Uh, another problem which will be uh, very often appearing on the surface is, uh, uh, shall we go or general or Roma specific? Or at which level we should have general monitoring and then which Roma specific? Uh, there is a trend. Uh, even some organizations now are working on developing uh, a kind of uh, inclusion index of Roma or social inclusion index of Roma. And there are two schools of thought in that regard. One is that uh, we should have Roma-specific indicators. And the other is that we should not have Roma-specific indicators. We should have standard indicators on social inclusion and human development and social cohesion, but populated with ethnic desegregated data. I am personally in favor of the second, because let's say the example of the unemployment rate. Unemployment rate is unemployment rate, but unemployment rate of Roma population is the formula of the standard unemployment rate populated with Roma desegregated data. What is very important to bear in mind in terms of specificity is the targets. We should be careful about this. On the one hand, uh, there are two extremes. Uh, shall we have specific Roma targets? Where, as I mentioned in the previous uh, slide, uh, you saw that it is a little bit uh, uh, maybe unrealistic to reach the level of 94%. Or shall we have uh, uh, general targets uh, which we uh, want to achieve during, during the inter interventions. But uh, uh, in any case, whatever the decision is taken, just remember this line. The indicator should follow the policy purpose, not the other way around. The indicators, as well as the data, are, are just tools which we use uh, in the process of assessment. The last line is also very important. Sometimes uh, when we are assessing the outcomes of interventions, we tend to use international comparisons, international comparability. For example, poverty rate by uh, PPP uh, dollars or other indicators. It is also, you can go on both uh, international comparability or uh, national level adequacy, but there is a trade-off. <coughs> the more you go, to a national uh, level details, the less comparable uh, data and indicators become cross countries and the other way around. The more you go to the, in the direction of international comparability, the less uh, adequate, the less policy relevant uh, it becomes at uh, national level. So somewhere uh, we should strike a balance and it is also a matter of creativity in that regard. Uh, one of the usual problems uh, uh, with data on Roma uh, is uh, the identification. Actually, what are we talking about? Who is Roma? Uh, it was mentioned on several occasions that it is uh, uh, often uh, a fluid or political construct. And uh, it, it is indeed the case. And it is very difficult uh, uh, to, to answer this question. And the answer to this, this question is crucial because any indicator has a denominator, which is usually the number of the population. Unemployment rate is the number of people out of job with no employment out of the total labor force. So we need to have the number of total labor force, which is the number of the population. So how do you count it? And depending what you put on the, in, in the denominator, you will have this or that level of uh, the respective indicator. Uh, I can tell you immediately and very honestly, there is no answer to this question because the question itself is unanswerable. You cannot answer what is the size of the population when you don't know exactly what is this population. And the reason is not that we don't know uh, who are Roma or not just that we don't know, but the reason are on the one hand multiple identities. When you ask people, are you Roma or are you not Roma, you immediately trigger uh, the, the, the question, does it mean that if I am Roma, I am not Hungarian, Bulgarian, Italian, whoever. On the, one, on the other hand, there is a, a risk of uh, uh, stigmatization and people are careful and uh, they don't know why I am asked uh, about this and that. And this is why uh, the data on Roma population so fluctuates from census to census. You always need to link this to the political context and the political development. But generally, there are three uh, levels of uh, 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 approaching this issue of defining the Roma universe. Self-identification, asking are you Roma or not Roma, external assessment, we ask other people, well, who, are the, who do you think is Roma? Ah, I think this is Roma, no, this is not Roma, and uh, basically that's it. And multiple identities approach. 
uh, the legal the legal issue the legal protection is also part of the uh, of the of the picture and uh, Michael was talking about this so we need to be aware of all these problems when addressing uh, uh, the issue of data does it mean uh, that uh, uh, the issue is totally unsolvable no simply we need to be a little bit uh, uh, more careful about this and more responsible when we talk about data on Roma we need always to to know what do we actually mean and who we have in mind. In our survey, we combined uh, multi-stage uh, uh, identification. At first stage, we were using uh, external uh, criteria, but at the second stage, uh, we were using the so-called uh, implicit endorsement of the initial external identification. In the case of uh, uh, fundamental rights agency survey, they were asking, do you have any Roma in your household? They were not asking, are you Roma or you're not Roma? In the cases of our survey, it was slightly different, but also comparably, uh, we, we were asking, we, we, we are starting the interview with a statement, we are doing a survey on a status of Roma, would you like to be included? And if the person said, I am not Roma, why should be interviewed? We were not uh, interviewing further. So this implicit endorsement is important because you don't force people into choosing sites, to say it metaphorically, but uh, still you have the information about who is who and how, people identify not losing the other, uh, the other elements of uh, the identity. And here is another crucial decision to be made. Uh, are we talking about all Roma population or are we talking about marginalized Roma population? The strategies of Roma inclusion are in my mind a little bit misleading in that regard because they are talking about uh, Roma inclusion, period, which means all Roma inclusion. But let's be frank, some of the Roma are included and they don't, not, don't need to be uh, subject of the inclusion uh, efforts. So how, how do we go around this? I think we're having here an uh, intellectual shortcut. When we talk about Roma inclusion, we mean inclusion of excluded Roma. So let's be also aware about, about this. And in our survey, we're clear. We are talking about uh, data of Roma who are subject to marginalization, so at risk of marginalization because they live in segregated or visibly uh, separated areas. Uh, what are the possible sources of data? Uh, the good news is that there is a source of data and this is our survey. Uh, I put here uh, uh, half uh, seriously, half jokingly, this is the best game in town. Why? Because it's the only one. <laughs> So this is the only survey and the only data set which uh, uh, we have, which covers uh, the number of the countries we have, uh, which has uh, quite in-depth uh, coverage in terms of priorities, and uh, uh, which has a baseline in 2004. So we have certain uh, possibility to compare the progress. But there are important caveats. First, this is a survey, and sample is always uh, a compromise sample is always a sample. It's expensive, so if we want to run it every one or two or three years, it's huge money. It costs a lot. And uh, as I mentioned, it provides data on Roma vulnerable to marginalization and not Roma in general. To me personally, this is not a problem because, in fact, as I mentioned, our interventions and our work is supposed to help those Roma who are subject to marginalization. So we are serving the purpose in that regard with our data. And uh, Another illustration, this is uh, uh, again from uh, this survey, another indicator having uh, uh, completed lower or secondary education. And uh, um, I'm using this slide here uh, just to sensitize you to be careful about data. Do you, th do you uh, see anything uh, kind of strange in this, in this figure, so the first bar is uh, the share of uh, uh, people having completed secondary, lower secondary education in 2004, the second, uh, the same indicator for 2011, and uh, the third indicator is the target for 2020. So anything a little bit suspicious? I would say the, prog the progress is very, very impressive, from 32% to 56%. So, of course, there is a confidence interval, but even when we count the confidence intervals, even if we take the higher uh, threshold for, 30, for the 2004 and the lower threshold of the uh, 2011, there is still a, answer, uh, to be, to be, to a question to be answered. Is it 
really that impressive progress, or the sample was maybe too small or something, which is a little bit strange and we should, not, we should be careful about data. But the moment you publish this, you have the government which say, oh, we did great, so we are on track, and by, by 2020, you see, we will reach uh, the target of 91%. It's a very difficult discussion, and here is uh, where the data starts translating into uh, policy and political dimensions. So I'm, I'm showing this just for you uh, to, to be aware. When you have a data set and you have a set of graphs, just also look beyond the bars and see, actually, does it make sense? To what extent it, it uh, squares with uh, my intuitive or real uh, life assumptions and so on? And then it will be much, much safer. Uh, one of the ways of going uh, around this issue of who is Roma is simply going beyond ethnic identity, going beyond ethnicity. And uh, it is a very pragmatic approach when you don't uh, have the means and you cannot answer unanswerable questions, you simply don't ask those questions. So instead of asking who is Roma and got stuck into this endless debate, actually, is this group or not this group, marginalized or non marginalized just go to other criteria, socioeconomic status, territorial characteristics, and then you will find the same vulnerable populations and you have high level of correlation between Roma distributions and territorial vulnerability. At the end of the day, you will be reaching the same policy purpose, including the excluded populations with higher share of the Roma among those who will be included, without calling them including the Roma. And I think this is very, very important also uh, for uh, another reason. In that way, we are addressing also the non-Roma populations sharing the same socioeconomic environment, which are also vulnerable, although not as vulnerable as the Roma. And it will expand you dramatically the support base for any integration or in, uh, inclusion policies. And those are, uh, very briefly, mm, the list of the benefits of this territorial approach. Uh, apart from what I've just said, it is uh, uh, an instrument which makes possible identifying the absolute number of people who you have to target. And in a plan, as well as in a strategy, you need to have an absolute number. You cannot have, and we will include the 95% uh, of the Roma population Yes, okay, but when you have to assign resources, you have to multiply the unit cost by number of people, and it matters. Is it five times more or five times less? The census gives five times less estimate, uh, other service five times more. That's the last slide. Uh, I tried to uh, draft some conclusions. Uh, initially, it was two slides, and uh, of course, it's not uh, uh, very serious, but what I think is important to take out of this is, first of all, the strategies themselves are not enough. They should be seen as a part of a process. And if uh, I were about to assess this, a major criterion for having a good or not so good strategy is, is it part of this package? Do we have the national implementation plan? Do we have localized mechanisms? Do we have an owner of the strategy? Not formally who is assigned to monitor or who is assigned to uh, be the front uh, uh, runner, so-called, of the strategy, but who owns this? Who distributes, who manages the resources, who distributes the tasks? The second uh, important issue, we need to distinguish always between different types of indicators, very simple but notoriously omitted, and also, we need to monitor the implementation of the process, which is the monitoring, and evaluation of the outcome. So those are two different things. Usually it's called M and E, monitoring and evaluation. But these are two distinct uh, processes with two distinct mechanisms and data behind them. And uh, finally, mm, uh, supporting the local governments. Uh, this is an ongoing discussion. Michael mentioned about the initiatives of, uh, I would say, chaotic or improvised to collect data at local level. Many governments are do that. And uh, this is both risky but also promising. It means that the local governments do uh, realize the need to have some information. They are doing it in a clumsy way, indeed. Not always in compliance with the international standards, indeed. So let's help them in that. Let's help them do it in the right way, methodologically sound, 
focusing on their local priorities, giving them a tool, because at the end of the day, they are those who will have to implement the entire, the entire chain. And unless things get traction at local level, I mean, the strategy could remain another piece of paper. And I hope it will not uh, remain. And one of the last, last uh, things, which is last in the bullet, but it is not last in priority, we are always talking about including Roma in the entire cycle. And we never do that. But in order to include the Roma in the entire cycle, we need two things. One is stop talking in our own language and start talking in the other's language, not linguistically speaking, culturally speaking. And second, be patient and invest deliberately into uh, bringing uh, uh, the capacity of those people. You can't expect that if you uh, uh, announce a competition for a researcher uh, that Roma, under all equal uh, uh, conditions, will win. So we need to start working now, helping those people, educating them, pushing them into different career perspectives, so that in five years we have a, a team, a critical mass of uh, Roma experts who will be uh, qualified enough to jeopardize our own jobs. I wish all of us this challenge in five years. Thank, Thank you. you. Now maybe questions, discussion? Michael. Please. I have a question concerning how the survey results will feed into the analyst. So how, how the survey, whether and how the survey results will feed into the assessment of the baseline of, of the strategies, whether you have a role in contributing through justice or review. Yeah, as I mentioned in my presentation, we sent already the preliminary results in the middle of December, and I think uh, this is under consideration by DGJLS and mm -hmm. DG Region. This uh, mm -hmm. what they know from all yes. Uh, the from the five member states, exactly. Yeah. The common mm -hmm. core five member states that are covered by both services. May I all add to this uh, question? Uh, there are two, two elements here. One is, uh, uh, of course, the data will be uh, made available and the governments will be using it. Actually, we are cooperating uh, in some uh, several occasions. The Slovak strategy is uh, using already this uh, preliminary data for their uh, target setting and uh, uh, the milestones and the indicators, which is, uh, I would say, it's one of the uh, good strategies. Of course, everything can be improved, but uh, it's a good document. But I think the more important purpose is uh, even not so much to have uh, the data reflected in the strategies, but the process of data-minded uh, thinking and action uh, embedded in the entire cycle of the implementation. I, I would say uh, we have a lot of data. What we are lacking is uh, the culture and uh, the ability to understand, use, and interpret this data. So this is an area in which uh, uh, we will be, will be working increasingly, particularly at local level as well. But in terms of uh, progress indicators, uh, not all, but s most of these indicators are comparable with the 2004 uh, baseline. So we will be able to see the progress. And starting from 2011, also see the progress until uh, 2020. The bigger question, which is open, what will happen between 2011 and 2020? How do we monitor the milestones? We'll see. Yes. data. So you are showing data for marginalized Roma and marginalized non-Roma. Did you try to enrich this database with national averages? And for some of your indicators, I guess we have national data, and there is a gap between mm -hmm. the national average and Roma would appear even larger. And would it allow us to do some analysis that is not, not able to be done from this? Yeah. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, the 2004 data set, it's, everything is online. Uh, I hope you have seen this. So if not, I will send you the, the, I mean, the links are on our website. It's, it's publicly open. Uh, we have exactly this. We have uh, the, the values of the individual indicators for Roma, for non-Roma in close proximity, and the national average. So have the three. And it's very interesting to compare. In some cases, uh, the non-Roma are very close to the national average. In some cases, are closer to, to the Roma uh, indicators. So we'll do the same, of course, for the 
for the um, uh, 2011 data set. The problem is that uh, our data set and the uh, FRA data set is, is richer than the standard uh, statistical instruments generate. So not all of the indicators which we are uh, calculating have their adequate uh, uh, indicators in national statistics. So in that, that case, we can't do much. But those who are, they are comparable, and we have this uh, comparison as well. Okay. No more questions? OK, thank you very much for the thank attention. You.